Okay, so a show of hands here. How many of you are putting in little effort into making your recording sound more authentic? Now be honest here, because I run a music forum, and I know all the stats. What you just heard, though, is a MIDI file that has no performance data whatsoever, other than just the notes, and also has poor quality instrument samples. But I'm going to transform this music into something that sounds more like a performance and you're going to be amazed at the results. The results even shocked me while I was tweaking and nuancing this piece of music and it took me approximately two to three hours to completely uh, nuance it. So throughout this video I'm going to do side-by-side -side comparisons so you can hear the transformations clearly. So be sure to stick around because you're going to want to hear these results for yourself. But before I go on, I want to thank Quinn from Young Composers for being such a good sport and letting me use his composition for this demonstration. The purpose of this video, aside from a lighthearted critique around this piece, is to show you that your playback in your notation software can sound like a performance. I'm going to be implementing my techniques into a software that I'm building for composers called Music Daughter. In fact, in today's demonstration, I will be featuring the prototype version of Music Daughter's playback system. The biggest thing that you need to be aware of when aiming for realism is latency. When it comes to realistic playback during the composition process, you need to have minimal latency. So here's an example of minimal latency during playback. Music Daughter also doesn't have any obstacles when it comes to playback. For example, you can just mouse over the measure you want to hear and then just press the spacebar. Or you can press Z and start scrubbing music immediately. It, it's really a, a great workflow. But minimal latency is key because without a responsive playback system, you can't compose your music in real time with these higher quality instrument sounds because the delay is annoying. Imagine pressing the space bar to play back your music and it takes a tenth of a second to register. Even this tiny bit of lag completely disrupts the composition process. And I believe this is one of the reasons why composers wait until after the composition process to sequence their music because the lag just simply gets into the way. But imagine if you could hear how your music is intended to sound as you compose it. If you were to hear your music as if it was being performed while you compose it, it would influence your composition process, making you write even better music. The reason for this is that you'd hear sounds that you normally wouldn't hear in a typical MIDI playback. Here's a demonstration of that in my first side-by-side -side comparison of Quinn's Etude. Quinn probably didn't realize that you could only hear three notes in the left hand, but after I nuanced it, it's very clear that there are four notes in the left hand which I decided to make staccato forte for emphasis. These notes are critical to hear clearly because they help bring the music back to the original theme. Let's hear that again. You can hear the difference, right? Now let's take a listen to the notes of this descending movement. We're left in suspension before the harmony suspension is released, but in order to enhance this change in mood, I place a staccato in one of the 16th note clusters in order to emphasize that beat. So let's hear the before and after.
This staccato really gives this section a sense of release, which you otherwise couldn't hear very clearly in the original MIDI rendering. Let's hear that again, because if you listen closely, I'm combining staccato with a tempo increase. Now this tempo increase lets the listener know that this section of the piece means business, and in fact acts as a way to hook up the main theme with its sub-theme. This next bit here utterly transforms the meaning and style of this next musical phrase. And I want to point out, I'm not changing a single note of this composition. This is 100% the original work, but because there's no data on how to perform this piece by the composer, I'm using my own interpretation here, which the composer may agree or disagree with. With that said, let's hear the before and after of this next section. Now that's a major transformation through the art of nuancing. It's almost unbelievable that this is the same piece. There are a few tricks going on here. Aside from staccato, I'm emphasizing the bass notes in the left hand in order to help bring out this section's low notes. The chords all have attacks, which just means that they may be very slightly rolled. This gives a more authentic feel to the piece. Those chords also may have some sharp staccato in order to help make the piece pop. So let's hear that again. Another trick that I'm using is that in the right hand, I'm emphasizing two ascending or descending notes, which help shape the melody. The original MIDI rendering doesn't have this data, so the ear has a hard time distinguishing melody without these dynamics. And one final trick that I'm implementing is turning this part into an accelerando section, leading to presto. Accelerando just means it, a gradual increase in speed, but then I gradually slow this piece down called retardando in order to bring this piece back down to the original tempo. Can you hear how this accelerando really enhances the sense of anxiety in this section? By now, I want to remind you that the whole point of this demonstration is to show you how your music can sound during the composition process. So if you are enjoying this MIDI transformation so far, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and to subscribe because the more support I get around Music Jotter, the quicker I can begin working on playback. Also, you don't want to miss my next upload of Quinn's full recording of this piece, so be sure you hit that notification bell. This next section, which is right before the conclusion, is really well done and I want to commend Quinn's execution here. Take note of the sudden change of mood. As far as the playback, take notice of the rolling chords in the left hand. Music Jotter will let you see these attack changes in its highlighted playback. And finally, let's take a listen to the ascending note before a repeat of the main theme and final ending.
biggest thing to note here is the pure staccato ascending note run before the descending notes take charge into the main theme. This was just a preference on my part in order to change up the recording, but I thought it helped make this run sound a little bit more authentic. Would you agree? Again, I want to thank Quinn from Young Composers for being the star of today's show. You're a really good sport, so I appreciate that, and for letting me have this opportunity of transforming your piece. And hopefully this demonstration helps you all see how a good playback system can make your music sound more like a performance. I want you to know that Music Jutter is going to focus on better playback at this level that you heard today. And in future videos, I will be going over why it's so difficult to achieve this level of realism and how I propose to solve these issues. But in the meantime, make sure you click here if you want to learn six things you need to be doing when writing your next composition. And be sure to click on this future video if you want to listen to the complete playback of Quinn's Etude. Thanks everyone. <laughs>